What's good, Josh? We're Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Triple H has made WWE great again, man. Uh, this should be an interesting video by WrestleMania. I do uh, think that Triple H has really turned things around for the better, in my opinion. He's uh, brought back uh, brought back um, a few people from NXT or people that was released by Vince McMahon. Um, he's brought more tag teams back. He's put more emphasis on the women's division, you know, um, and hopefully, you know, he's actually put more emphasis on building other tag teams than what the normal tag teams we've been seeing. And I've been loving the booking decisions and uh, the creative ideas for certain people's returns or just in general when it comes to like what's happening on the pay-per-views now. You know what I'm saying? They don't seem, you know, bloated with too many matches. They seem straight to the point, concise, and people are enjoying it. Hell, we keep getting reports on how certain future pay-per-views are already being sold out because people want to go to these shows people want to check out what triple h can continue to keep offering us so for me even before seeing this video i think he's been doing a pretty good job is everything you know perfect no of course could there be things he work on to make things better sure but at the same time um he's doing a fantastic job in my opinion and i'm looking forward to seeing where he takes things going forward so let's check this out by wrestling Lamian. let's get right into this one a Triple H's shocking rise to the head of WWE creative has led to some very happy members of the WWE Universe. Join us now as we look at how Triple H has made WWE great again. Facts. Sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Triple H is on, on his grind on this place. one. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and a non-wrestling channel. Incredible. Number one, hyping next week's show. And while the overall improvement in Raw and SmackDown is reason enough for fans to tune in more, Triple H also builds up matches for next week, something that was rare under you know who. Even when the WWE booked matches for the following week, they were often only mentioned on social media and even worse, often changed at the last minute due to script rewrites. True. Not so anymore, as the WWE will build up matches for the following week or even two weeks from a show. It's about more than announcing matches, it's about setting it up with segments such as brawls or interviews. Mm -hmm. Number two, less rematches. One of the biggest signs of this is this is very true. We don't see as many rematches as we have. Yes, there are some. I, if you guys remember when he first took over, I think he had Ricochet going against uh Baron Corbin. Uh it was I, I think it was like two times like back-to-back -back weeks or whatnot, or I think it was like two times. We don't see as many as we used to because there's more people to interact with the different wrestlers because since he's brought in more people. So I do like the fresh matchups for sure. Lazy booking is frequent rematches. There's nothing inherently wrong with rematches and a good promoter will use them to increase the fans' interest in seeing subsequent matches. However, when they're thrown together with no logic, they mm -hmm. scream of creative bankruptcy. Yep. While Triple H isn't perfect in avoiding lazy rematches, they've gone down substantially. This is That's very true. fancy two wrestlers competing in a rematch the following week, and if it does happen, it's usually in a different situation, either a tag match or a stipulation thrown in. Mm -hmm. The same applies to matches at premium live events, as seen by this year's Extreme Rules, where rematches are being contested under stipulations. Mm -hmm. Number three, premium live events, especially again. Other than WrestleMania and SummerSlam, I was just talking about this, bro. These live, these shows have felt like big deals, like they're important. For example, um, Clash at the Castle, that was like <laughs> a, a, a WrestleMania s quality. That shit was great. SummerSlam was fantastic, and Extreme Rules. The first time I can say Extreme Rules in quite some time has been overall enjoyable the entire show. So, yeah, man, it's just one of those type of things. So far, Triple H has been knocking out these pay-per-views. Premium live events were beginning to look like special editions of Raw and SmackDown. 
Well, not anymore, as the WWE has reserved big matches for their shows and better giving fans a chance to see matches they won't see on television. Mm -hmm. Extreme Rules is an excellent example as a show went from one stipulation match last year to an event this year comprised of nothing but stipulation matches. As it should Even be. better, these matches should all help further the storylines behind each match. For instance, there's Riddle's fight pit match against Nebesis Seth Rollins where the ultimate bro has challenged the visionary to face him in a match where the winner has to knock out or submit their foe. This is a great opportunity for Riddle who's been chasing Rollins for some time but also a great opportunity for Rollins to humiliate Matt by beating him at his own game, even though that didn't happen. Yeah. Likewise with the story of Liv Morgan challenging Ronda Rousey to an extreme rule so reflects Morgan's knowledge that the baddest woman on the planet are Matt. So apparently uh, someone has sent this to me on Instagram. I don't know how true this is so take it with a grain of salt but apparently the ending of Ronda Rousey versus Liv Morgan um, was supposed to have thumbtacks added to it and basically it was supposed to be the same result Liv Morgan passing out but this time Liv Morgan was supposed to pass out in some thumbtacks like there was going to be thumbtacks involved in the finish not sure how true that is if there was some thumbtacks involved in the finish that would have been a little bit extreme I'm not even going to lie to you her passing out in the thumbtacks would have been a, a crazy visual so not sure how true that is but it could have definitely enhanced the overall match. Which is uh, in her MMA background, but that the match gives Morgan a chance to capitalize on her undeniable heart, even though she didn't win. Yeah. In addition, the Cerebral Assassin has made premium live events unpredictable as fans have more reasons than ever to tune in. Mm -hmm. Whether it was Bailey and Damage Control's debut at SummerSlam or Bray Wyatt's wild WWE return at Extreme Rules, Trip says giving fans more reasons to watch WWE television and premium shows. Facts. Number four, tightly booked shows. Now, with 80% less filler, well, that's one way the WWE can book its shows, particularly in its pay-per-views, which no longer feature endless hype videos instead of matches, interviews, mm -hmm. or backstage segments. The same goes for WWE's TV as fans get to see more wrestlers. Sure, not everyone gets the same amount of time, but fans are seeing more wrestlers than ever before, and thanks to the WWE's use of Easter eggs, eagle-eyed fans can watch stories develop even in the background. Unlike the Crash TV or the Attitude Era, this isn't about featuring so many segments that something is bound to connect, but a systematic spread of segments and storylines throughout the show with the goal of making every one of them count. Number 5. A Realistic Feel mm. Is pro wrestling a sport? Well, we're not going to open that can of worms, but wrestling yeah. is, if nothing else, a simulation of a sporting event with wrestlers competing for glory, cash, and championships, with more than a touch of revenge thrown in. That's why it plays out better when the show has wrestlers acting like real people or larger-than-life representation. I can appreciate that. They, they definitely, they definitely act more realistic. Like if you guys remember the whole, which was fucking fantastic. Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle, they're back and forth on like the little side by camera, side by side interview. That was great. And then the whole after the segment was over and Seth Rollins was like, yo, you want to talk about my family? And they started getting really personal. That, that, that's, that gave off some real human vibes. Like they didn't come off robotic. They came off like, Real human beings would talk to each other if they had beef with each other. And I've been loving those subtle changes to how people are presented so far. Patients of real people rather than caricatures that you wouldn't accept in a bad Not sitcom. Not to suffer and suck. The current suck regime has improved the WWE's atmosphere so much in a short time that it feels like wrestlers are working to achieve the aforementioned goals rather than being embroiled in silly storylines. Although there is the occasional moment for comedy. Yeah. The WWE may not be the attitude era in terms of edginess, but they have regained its edge without ditching the cleaner product that blue chip advertisers enjoy. Mm -hmm. They provide plenty of action, but it's less likely to insult the fans' intelligence or make them cringe when a non fan enters a room. Facts, Number six, facts, more facts. quality matches. Now, WWE has some of the best talent in the world, but up until recently, fans of well-executed matches have often looked to NXT or occasional yep. premium live event bout for something memorable. And now the WWE features several high-quality matches that are entertaining and give the fans a reason to stay tuned in between angles and interviews. They're still finding the right balance of using established stars with newer talent it's working to get over, but it seems to be getting better every week. Number seven, continuity matters. 
I do wrestlers suffer oh, from Oh, this amnesia. is very good. This How is very good. The continuity. Trying to run someone over with a bulldozer one week, then taggy with their would-be victim the next week. And many <laughs> fans are happy to see the WWE acknowledge the past, such as Mysterio and Edge teaming up and recalling their run 20 years ago as a team, especially when it comes to wrestlers who were enemies, explaining why they're suddenly willing to trust each other, mm -hmm. such as McIntyre recently did when he teamed with Kevin Owens. It's encouraging for longtime fans to watch a show that recognizes its past and sometimes rich history that can be used to field future storylines. Triple H is apparently concerned about continuity as he recently hired comic book and TV writer Rob Fee, who has a background in writing horror and claims to be a longtime wrestling fan. Oh, hey, well, that's one of the things I believe I talked about in one of my past videos is if this guy is truly a wrestling fan, because we I think we need to have more writers in the writing room <laughs> or, or part of the creative team that are actually wrestling fans that know what the product is, that know how the product should be presented or have an idea of how it should be presented. It doesn't make sense to have certain writers that don't know a lick of wrestling, but you have them writing for your show. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully they can continue it in an up, uh, upward trajectory of better storytelling and uh, better characters and making things cohesive. I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. Job title as director of long-term creative will hopefully ensure more consistent storylines. Hope so. All right, Easter eggs. Easter eggs have become a popular element. This has been some of Triple H's best things, like best work. It's the Easter eggs, the little things that you have to pay attention to and watch the show. And, you know, it's not, they don't even put it in your face. It's just like, did you see that? And then, you know, somebody on social media is going to post it. So it makes you want to check out the show even more. Like, did you see what happened right there? In many forms of entertainment, whether they're cartoons, TV shows, or movies, but just as the WWE isn't forgetting its past, it's rewarding eagle-eyed fans who see a clue in an ongoing mystery, including a QR code for the White Rabbit, or why something in the background that hints where a story is going, such uh -huh. as Nikki Ash's backstage spat with Dewdrop that wasn't obvious but was clear enough for someone paying attention. Rob Fee, who we just mentioned, did the lion's share of the work on the White Rabbit clues a good sign for future Easter eggs. Number 9. Acknowledging Fan Favorites mm -hmm. One of the biggest complaints of the Vince McMahon era was McMahon's refusal to acknowledge fan favorites. How many times did the WWE Universe get behind talents such as Zack Ryder only Whew. for McMahon to just outright bury him, seemingly because he was punishing fans for cheering wrestlers he didn't push over himself? Yep, on the other hand, much. McMahon's push of his favorites over those of the fans were equally disheartening. Whether it was Vinnie Mac's inexplicable push of Batista when fans wanted Daniel Bryan or pushing Roman Reigns as a babyface despite thunderous boos, the WWE Universe was frequently disappointed. While it's too early to tell how much Triple H is paying attention to the fans, after all he booked Roman Reigns over Drew McIntyre at Clash at the Castle, he's booking wrestlers the fans have felt been overlooked such as Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Obviously, Bray Wyatt's return at Extreme Rules is the biggest example of WWE listening to its Very fans. Very big example. Their downright dumb decision to dump Bray Wyatt last year puzzled fans who adored Bray Wyatt. Whatever Vince McMahon's reasons were, the WWE fixed the mistake and Wyatt is this back is... looking like he's about to get the biggest push of his career. And I am all for it. I know some people still feel some type of way about um, Drew not winning that clash, but once again... It could have happened, sure. Would have been an amazing pop, cool. But I think they're trying to build up Karrion Cross, and right now, it's not Drew time. Uh, they have many options, and I really want to see what they do with Bray here. How do they book him going for it is really something that I'm looking forward to. So, Number 10, making titles count. Yep. When was the last time WWE booked a title match with no rhyme or reason? Fans have to be happy to see wrestlers competing for the chance at a title opportunity rather than tuning into a title defense with zero build. Fans have seen this on Raw, SmackDown, and even at premium live events, often leading to questions about why a challenger has earned a title shot and yep. why there is any process Very for earning one. Although the WWE still needs to unravel the mess that is the undisputed title picture, both with the singles and tag titles, it's done a great job elevating the United States and Intercontinental Championship, yes. putting the belt on Seth Rollins recently. A very good move. Very good Both move, Rod yeah. SmackDown will benefit from having their own world singles titles and world tag titles, but at least for now, fans can watch a title match that means something and feel that there's a real chance of the belt changing hands, unlike any... 
the mid card division, the mid card titles, they have they haven't looked this important and this good in quite some time. Both of them at the same time. I am really interested to see what Seth Rollins does as the new United States champion. I can't wait. And Walter Hell, Gunther has been killing it as Intercontinental Champion. Anything held by the bloodline. Number 11, giving NXT wrestlers a second chance. Yep, yep, yep. Vince McMahon's booking of NXT wrestlers who made it to the main roster symbolizes everything wrong with McMahon's static approach to booking. Although McMahon ended up being released by many of these wrestlers, Triple H has done well in bringing back the talented ones who were free agents. Karrion Cross, Scarlett, Io Sky, Dakota Kai, Dexter Loomis, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae have all shown that they have goods to deliver entertaining matches and angles and it was a wise move on Triple H's part to give them a second chance. Mm -hmm. Well actually it's their first real chance at success yeah. given McMahon's misuse of them. And number 12, putting heat on AEW. Finally Triple H has made things better for the WWE Universe by putting the heat on AEW. While this may seem counterproductive, lighting up fire under AEW by running solid shows and running them the same weekend as them motivates WWE wrestlers all the more as they wanted the WWE to succeed. But there you have it, folks. How yeah, man, H I'm all for good competition. You know, I think for the longest time, we have been so used to Vince McMahon just pretty much having the company on autopilot. The company is making the most money it's ever made <laughs> in its entire history. Yes, AEW is their competition. I put competition loosely because they're the bigger company, bro. AEW, they could, they've been putting, you know, they could put on good shows, but Vince McMahon knows that he's good. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to really be creative. He doesn't have to really think about putting on an entertaining show. He literally was booking the shows mostly for, for himself. He was just booking the shows mostly for himself, or sometimes there was reports saying he forgot that he booked certain shows, you know, previously or certain matches previously, and then they end up doing a rematch. Like, he really didn't have to do anything extra because the company was going to always continually make money. So now that Triple H is in charge and he has these ideas, he can put on compelling shows while still making good money and ultimately you know it, it puts AEW in the situation to continue to put on good shows as well you know so that's that me personally I'm all for competition in the wrestling space allowing people to put on the best shows and we as fans we benefit from it when it's all said and done so comment down below let me know I want y'all so far from Triple H being in control I want y'all to give him a letter grade so far. For the past few months, since he's been in control to now, what would you give Triple H as a letter grade? Me, personally, out of everything that I've seen so far, um, I would give him a, I would give him A-. minus. I can't give him an A-plus yet because we still got to figure out what the hell we're going to do with the World Championship situation, the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship situation. Once he can figure that out and it makes sense and it works and it, and it is it's we can get the separate brands with their separate head champions. I could possibly give them an A plus. But right now, as it stands, it is a solid A, A minus, man. This is this has been pretty good and pretty enjoyable. And I've been enjoying doing the live stream with you guys. So comment down below. Let me know what letter grade y'all would give Triple H from his from him taking over to where we are now, what letter grade would you guys give him, man? But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.